and welcome back to Mysteries Channel. So, I really want to apologize. I wanted to get Chapter 4 out last week for sure, but there was no school on Friday, and I hadn't exactly planned that out, so I had a lot of kids to entertain, and there was just no getting anything done, nothing extra, no work. That being said, here you go, you have it today. Again, I need to apologize. I have no idea how you say a lot of the words in here, and I know I'm just slaughtering them, so please forgive me on that. The style of writing that the author has is kind of all over the place. I did take time to go through and make sure when I'm condensing his paragraphs or combining paragraphs because he likes to split things up a lot, like he will have three sentence, par three sentence paragraphs about a location within a certain time frame move on to another location in that time frame, and then come back up to that top one. So I try to keep it together because in my head it just, it just, it's better for me understanding wise to really understand what he's trying to say about this civilization at this point in time. So I didn't try to take any liberties. You can definitely read through and understand what I'm talking about. Of course, I'll have it up on the screen as I'm going through it, but yeah, that is how I'm trying to understand it. Also, um, at the end, I always put in a little side note because I'm learning about places and people and their legends that I've just never really heard of before. And so I always assume that maybe you guys haven't heard of it. So yeah, that's the side note at the end. All right. So what are we on today? We are on chapter four, the event. The event, 11,500 years ago. Chan talks of how they have been actively trying to piece this world puzzle together since 1949. And yet, even though it is incomplete, they do have a representation of Earth 11,550 years ago. He asks you to look at longitude 90 degrees west and latitude 60 degrees north. It would be the Hudson Bay. Now, if you move this point so that it is at the North Pole on the axis of rotation, you would see the configuration of the world between 18,500 and 11,500 years ago. The North Polar Ice Cap formed the Laurentian Basin in Canada. There was a huge continent in the Atlantic Ocean, an area that stretched from Iceland to the Bahamas. The Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea did not exist as they were landed this time. There was another continent in the Pacific covering the area now ringed by the Hawaiian Islands, the Galapagos, Easter Island, Tahiti, the Solomons, and the Caroline Islands. Egypt and the Holy Land, mixtures of vegetation and civilization. Greece, the land of the Hellenas, was the home of tall, blue-eyed, blonde-haired people that had standards of science and law unmatched to this day. The province of Ceylon held the major civilization of India, Ahoidia, now a suburb of Lucknow, was the capital of India. The Amazon Basin was an inland sea called the Sea of Zares. The mouth of the Amazon was a wide sea-going connection between the Atlantic and the Zares. South America was not yet mountainous. At this point in time, the, the prehistoric city of Tianwanaku, Peru, was at sea level. Now it sits at 12,500 feet above the Pacific. Tianwanaku was a metropolis a seaport with a canal system for seagoing ships as large as what we use today. The astronomers of Tianwanaku used telescopes much like we do. They had a huge satellite orbiting the Earth 449 times a year. They used the satellite as a standard because of its as a time standard because of its accuracy. The great navigators, the great scientists, the great explorers of the eastern hemisphere were dark-eyed, dark-haired Mayans. About 11,500 years ago, in the year 9,550 BC, as dated by astronomers from Potsdam University, from writings in the ruins of Tiwanaku, the 16-mile thick shell of Earth shifted its position in a fraction of a day, 7,000 years after the previous shift. The great continent of the Pacific disappeared almost completely. Easter Islands and Tiwanaku with it until the recent cataclysm that created Noah's Flood pushed them back up. The North Pole moved southward and the Sudan Basin shifted towards the North Pole. This is the time which the Talmud states is the great setting of the Pleiades beyond the horizon, when the Holy Land was moved to a region of terrible cold for 5,000 years until Noah's Flood 6,500 years ago. What remained of the vast Pacific continent 
rolled to the South Pole to be later rediscovered by the Mayan explorers as the last remains of their motherland, a frozen reservoir of mud at the bottom of the ocean. The Mayan tongue lived on in, in scattered remnants in the Polynesian languages, Greek, Yakut, Egyptian, Eskimo tongues, Normandic, Oriental, German, and American Indian languages. Of the Atlantic continent, only a large island remained in the west, while the ocean between there and Gibraltar to the east was left shallow, muddy, and impassable to ships. A clue later introduced by Captain Cook when finding the Maori tribe in New Zealand in the 1700s hears of their ancient legends of Saturn's rings, even though they hadn't heard of telescopes. The evidence in Tiwanaku shows that the civilization was wiped out suddenly as people were caught up in their daily activities. Further evidence shows that this city suffered the same fate as Easter Island. This cataclysm that started the rocky and Andy mountain ranges also buried Tiwanaku under the sea, only to be heaved up to its current elevation of 12,500 feet some 6,500 years ago. So the cataclysm of 11,500 years ago saw the Hudson Bay and the opposite polar areas southwest of Australia both roll towards the equator on the opposite sides of Earth and the Sudan Basin region rolled to the North Pole. The two mile thick ice cap of Laurentian or Laurentine Basin and the Indian Ocean have shifted from their polar times. The oceans rose 200 feet all over the world as they have after each cataclysm. Again, Chan reminds us that this all happens in a quarter to a half of a day. The Earth's oceans and atmosphere through angular momentum keep rotating in their normal direction during the shift. While the continents are subjected to tremendous upheavals and earthquakes, the molten layer from below the Earth's 60 mile shell breaks through all over the world. At this point, the oceans begin their violent inundations and the atmosphere picks up unimaginable hurricane force supersonic wind. After six days from the start of the cataclysm, the holocaust of Earth subsides and on the seventh day, it settles. The resurrections from the waters, Tau, lived on in many stories of man from the few who survived, later becoming Taora, Tungora, and Tororas. Sorry for the mispronunciation, I have no idea how to really say this. Depending on which tribes you have heard them from. On a side note, I looked up Taora. It is a French Polynesian creator god. His legend states that he created himself, then broke his shell to form rocks and sand. His tears fill the oceans and the lakes and the rivers of earth. All right, so that is the conclusion to chapter four. What do you guys think? Fascinating stuff. I want to know because I'm coming up across so many different legends and creation stories from all over the world. I just think, God, it's so fascinating. It's so crazy and cool how closely they are tied together. Just small little minor details that are changed the story up. I have my theories on it. I'm going to do another video on that after this series is over on how just one little word being different can change an entire book. So, you guys from all over the world, tell me your creation stories. Tell me your interesting legends. I mean, there's plenty of them. I'll go over the ones that I know eventually, but I'd love to hear what you guys think and what you guys talk about and what you know that we don't even know about. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, leave some comments, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.